why you should be paying attention to the old Ponzo Live. Because tonight, we're going to be discussing a topic that I have really enjoyed thinking about. And it's what champions from League of Legends should be added to Legends Runeterra. What champions have not been added? Broken up by area. And I know Riot has said they're not going to be adding any more regions to Legends Runeterra. They have 10. They like it at 10. I agree. I think it's just going to be kind of weird when you look at the amount of champions they have to add. Like, they have to create either more target. They, they need to go around the board. Because they've been building up Ixtal from a lore standpoint. And there's no way they're just going to shove them all into Shirima. Same with the Void. I think, sure, but I feel like you're going to just be saturating cards and regions. And it's just going to be harder to make decks. So, how do you balance that? Are you going to make more Runeterran champions? Are you going to make... You know, are you going to go back on the lore a little bit and make them in different regions? Like... We'll see. I don't know. From Ionia, you got Yon, Lilia, Akali, and Wukong. Bilgewater just got Graves. Shadow Isles, Vex, Karfus, and Yorick. I think people have been speculating as to if Yorick is going to be added to the game soon. Built over in Zaun, you got Renata, Singed Mundo. Like, look at all these champions that they have to add from Pilt over in Zaun. These are, like, these are all kind of under Shirima, I guess. Kiana's dope. Like, there's lots of op opportunities for storytelling. The Void. Fucking, can you imagine Cho'Gath in Legends of Runeterra? Just think for a second. You got Cassiopeia, Cassante, Nefiri. Targon, all the champs have already been added. I guess Morgana, maybe. And then Demacia, you got Xin Zhao, Sona, Silas. Noxus, Kled, Morden, Talon. Freljord, Gragas, and Nunu. But Shaco? Shaco has no lore. So now that you've seen the list, I've put together a little bit of a, a little bit of a PowerPoint here because I don't know how else to convey this information. This is my plead to Riot. Please, 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 please add these champs to the Legends of Terra. This is all based on my opinion, my speculation. I'm trying to go into one champion per region, just trying to keep it uh, short and sweet because it offers opportunities for me to make different videos in the future. The reason why I chose some of these characters is I wanted to make sure that they had some fun lore to build off of or don't have any. And personally, I just love these characters in the end, in the end of the day. I'm going to start with Ionia. I think the coolest character from this region would be good old Fashion Ivern, baby. Friend of the Forest. He used to be Ivern the Cruel. I'm pretty sure he was... In the Freljord, he lived in the Freljord, so he was a barbarian, he was a savage. He just loved killing things, he had a lot of hate in his heart, and he traveled to Ionia. He was walking around the forest, and he stumbled upon the God Willow, the tree that gives life in, in, parts of, in that part of Ionia. He saw this tree and cut it down, and when it was done, he saw how beautiful everything was in the forest and how beautiful this god willow tree was and well, he just destroyed it and from that point on lost all the hatred in his heart and started taking care of the forest and the animals and the trees and everything and started turning into a half man and now all he does is wanders the forests of ionia and uh, heals people and heals the animals and the plants very interesting lots of ways that you could you know maybe he you make his followers around his biography or maybe you tell him for the current state and how he's changed from there uh lots of opportunity this is what he does so his passive is the friend of the forest he can't attack jungle monsters he's a jungler his q he sends a route out to someone and enemy and allies can dash to it he can make bushes for allies so this is just like kind of a game tactic advantage and then there's Trigger Seed, which you can shield an ally and explodes uh, if an enemy is too close to them. And then your ult is that you summon Daisy, who basically does your bidding. It's a familiar that uh, hits, knocks up people and does damage and is really good for, you know, your, your Q as well as your teammates. So kind of translating that into the Legends of Runeterra, I'd like to see 
Ivern at like a medium mana level, like four, and just really wanting to buff allies and make his their allies stronger. So make it so Ivern wouldn't be able to attack, but just have like a bunch of health. Like like you could do like a three mana zero eight or uh no uh, like a three mana zero five just do like the stat line of petrocyte charger i think and your the idea of the character is to summon other allies have other allies go into battle and then you shield them with trigger seed it would like make you think about the attack order on the stack like you choose an ally to go into battle give them the shield they get plus zero plus two and if the blocker deals more than the shield amount so if they're like a three attack blocker then you deal one damage to nearby enemies so you would set it up to where you would have one attacker and then your primary attacker in the middle and then another attacker on the end to get maximum value of dealing aoe damage so I don't think there is AOE damage really in Legends of Runeterra right now. So that would be a pretty interesting new concept to learn. And I mean, set up with different types of people, like just be a very flexible support chain. Uh, and then the, when you level up, when allies have attacked with Trigger Seed three times, you summon Daisy, which is just like a big card game finisher. Uh, and then another buff to the Trigger Seed. So. I don't know. That's. I feel like that's just something that would be really interesting to see what it's like. Next up, we got Bilgewater. And as I mentioned earlier, Bilgewater only has graves left to add into Legends of Runeterra. Uh, he was basically a smuggler who roughed it around Bilgewater and got involved with some of the pirates out there. He got on. He stole his blunderbuss or his shotgun here and hopped onto a boat off to Sharima. there he found twisted fate where they got involved in a high stakes poker game and once they got to Sharima, dose of fate and graves just spent their time running around the coast of Sharima and you know getting involved in shenanigans and smuggling and stuff like that and uh just criminal stuff and eventually the Sharima police caught up to them and twisted fate abandoned graves when he needed him most and Graves got arrested and Twisted Fate didn't. He went back to Bilgewater. Graves served his time in prison and upon getting out, he went back to Bilgewater to get his revenge on Twisted Fate. But as he was trying to do that, Graves and Twisted Fate got involved with Gangplank and they had to work together to get away from the Reaver King of Pirates. So they uh, found themselves running away from Bilgewater again, but Graves never let go of that betrayal that Twisted Fate had on him. So could be a lot of fun telling them about the different escapades that they got involved with while they were in Sharima. Maybe tie them into like, you know, lore with Azir or Zerath or, you know, whoever would be over there. Or even Cassante would be pretty interesting. Maybe they make a story where they go see Cassante. And... So if you're not familiar with Graves, I've played Graves quite a bit. I actually really enjoy his gameplay because you just, you know, you're a dude smoking a cigar, dashing around and blabbing people in the face with a shotgun. It's, in terms of a character, he's pretty, pretty fun. So passive, basically he just has uh, shotgun shots, if you missed it. He has shotgun shots that are just two in the barrel. His Q is basically a projectile that goes out, deals damage, explodes, and comes back to him. Smoke screen, you take away vision. Quick draw is ability, so you, it's like one of his core components of how you play him. Uh, he only has the two shots to deal damage, so you use quick draw to refill one of those shots and get three shots. And it's all about kind of timing this ability with his other abilities to pull off maximum damage and make sure you're always dealing damage, not just sitting there reloading in the middle of a team fight and stuff like that and then collateral damages are he gets knocked back and shoots a big bowl of big gold cannonball out of his shotgun boom you know so cool character love the design and i would love to see them try to work in some way to make graves like aggro type with synergy of 
yeah yeah stacking the armor i guess that would be pretty interesting too if like there's some way that you could give graves tough and then after he shoots people he adds on more health or something like that because that's a pretty core component of his kit is uh using your e offensively towards uh an attack dealer so that you can get the most value out of stacking your armor so whenever he's in combat he gains a spell that's called the end of the line kind of tying into one of his abilities his q which shoots out the q explodes and comes back to him and then once you strike you uh deal three damage on your strike and then you get a spell that you can shoot that deals three more damage to kind of like end combat bruised and then use the rest of your spell damage i don't know i don't know how the best way to put graves into combat and see what he would be like i'd kind of this is one of the ones that i'm a little weaker on but i think uh there's potential there there's definitely potential there's, there's definitely more from a lore standpoint so shadow isles this is i'm i'm very happy about this one because i was thinking about you know who have they not added to shadow isles you know york's there and i'm pretty sure they're going to be adding york into the to the game soon i think they also might be adding karthus into the game soon but who i would really like to see it's vex baby vex is a super fun character to play in league of legends but she is really like from a character design and art standpoint i feel like there's a lot of potential here and kind of telling another side of the shadow isles that wasn't told so she's she's from Bandal city where all the orals are from grew up and she hated it she never fitted in and when viego went on his slaughtering campaign he visited Bandal city and introduced vex to the to the black mist she fell in love with the black mist and loved how it made her feel and was really drawn in by it she also had an alter ego named shadow that became a lot stronger with it and uh when viego came to bandle city vex met him and felt like definitely fell for him wanted to be his minion and as she as they were getting to the biggest fight th that they was building up to the fight with the sentinels vex found out that viego was doing all this killing and taking over all these uh places because she thought that he was taking over all these places because he wanted to create despair and bring it to the world but in reality she found out that viego was only doing this to try to find his queen and when vex heard this he she got very annoyed with him and thought that he was just a normie and was trying to create his own happiness and he wasn't already happy with creating doom and she was just like wow this dude's kind of lame so she left him <laughs> and went back home saw her parents introduced her new self to her parents and ex expecting them to just be disgusted at her uh her parents were like if this is really you then we love you and she was just like you guys suck and she left and went back to the Shadow Isles. <laughs> so what it boils down to, Vex was like, wow, this dude is destroying the world for no reason. This is cool. No, I'm actually doing it to get my girl back. Wow, you're a normie. Parents, what do you think of me? Oh, we still love you. You guys suck. Ugh. <laughs> uh. It's just, it just is really funny and it really fits her character very well and allows them to be a, like very tongue in cheek with what they can do. So, Vex, I have level 7 mastery on her, so yeah, no big deal. I know how to play her a little bit. So, Doom and Gloom plays in a lot to her kit. It's about uh, putting these stacks on people and dealing X extra damage. Uh, the gameplay mechanic is if they, if they dash, they get, take a deal extra damage and then her passive also makes people feared using up her next ability with that so fear is a big part mr bolt you just shoot damage at people w is a space it is uh just a shield extra shield and her e is aoe damage so she's a spell caster kind of built around her doom and gloom passive of fearing people and being really consistent cc and then her ult, she just sends her shadow at people. 
and then she dashes to people. So it's basically like a Kaisa ult. So how does that translate into the game? Relatively early card spell slinger, so similar to Seraphine. And I would like to see them give some support to self slay. So killing off your own units to get an advantage on the board, like creating husk units and then killing them off to create more units. Because I feel like that's pretty funny and uh, it kind of fits into Vex's backstory lore while also creating a union concept. So uh, whenever an ally is slayed, give an enemy unit gloom stacks and then you create a Mistral Bolt in the hand. So you can shoot any enemy with uh, deal two damage, but if they have Gloom, then it's double the damage. And then when she levels up, she uh, Vex only levels up after she's killed enemies with Gloom three times. So kind of similar to Kindred. And then when she's leveled up, she creates sad Shadow Surges in hand. And then in League, Shadow Surges reset if you kill an enemy. So you spend four mana to deal five damage to any enemies. And if you kill the enemy with that cast, you create a second Shadow Surge in hand. And it keeps going and going and going. And as long as you continue killing enemies uh, with Shadow Surge. And I just think that would be a really fun take on Vex in Legends of Runeterra. You have cards, kill your own enemies, and then through, through killing your own enemies, you create removal in your hand kind of similar to darkness i guess but instead of just summoning cards to create darkness in your hand you kill your own enemies like a base basically a high note every time you kill your own enemy which i think would be pretty interesting and that scales into the game well uh just kind of depends on if they have units on board <laughs> but that's fine anyways piltover and zon i feel like i could create a whole video of just piltover and zon what champs could be added into the game and if you would like to see that just uh, you know let me know corky this is the character i would like to see added in uh in, in piltover and zon his lore does not have a lot he has like two paragraphs of lore this is corky right here if you don't know him flies on a raffle copter and just basically like deals damage to people uh he used the raffle copter you know he was friends with heimerdinger and built the raffle copter to deliver it to deliver recon and packages while uh piltover and zon and everyone is in wartime and eventually the war ended causing corky to go into retirement but you know he still is urging to get back out there and, and fly the raffle copter around and I think it would be a really interesting way to build uh, more lore over a really wacky character. Lots of uh, opportunities to do some storytelling there. His passive is that he gets this thing that's called the package. You go back to base and you pick it up. You get increased speed while you're carrying this package. And then you deal a crap ton of damage with your passive. If you just W, give a carpet bomb. He's a key, his Q gives... Uh, true vision and it's just basically a, a bond that you shoot to people w is just a dash an aoe dash or a, you know a drop in the bomb dash his gatling gun is just something where he just shoots out projectiles in a conical manner just blah, 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 blah. and then your r is that you shoot missiles at people so i think it would be really funny if Corky, his in League of Legends, Corky is really known for his scaling. So if you let him get to late game, he's on par with potentially Kale in terms of scaling and dealing damage. And he's just a really funny character. He looks so odd, but he just deals so much damage. You don't respect him. And then out of nowhere, he is just doing half of your damage. It's similar to Rumble, I guess, a little bit. But he would be like a super early game unit, had no attack, but dealt damage and kind of similar to Vagar and his darkness three rockets like playing into his passive of every sixth rocket is uh the big red one which shoots uh and does extra damage that'd be fun four consecutive rockets and then the fifth one you shoot after you get it on round five like it's a fleeting card every single turn uh once you get it and you shoot the big rocket Corky levels up 
and you create a Hextech munitions in hand, so you get your package, and your uh, package deals four damage to all enemies on board. So it's basically like a board clear. So you just kind of like ping people, you ping people with your rockets, just pew, 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 pew. And then once you cast the big red one, you level up and you get his package and then he flies across the board and then he uh, starts over just like Nidalee. I don't know. I think he that way he could be a blocker, but he's not really attacking. He's only just shooting uh, with his rockets. I don't know. There'd be, I'm sure it'd be like you can deal two to an enemy or one to the enemy nexus. I don't know. Just might be something fun. Corky is just a wacky character and I'd love to see them add some more wacky characters to the war. So Sharima... We're going with K. Sante. So he grew up uh, in Nizuma while Azir and Zareth were overseeing Shirima. And when when they overtook Shirima, they sent some bad animals and creatures and stuff of that sort to basically just ransack the lands of Shirima. And it was up to K. Sante to protect his homeland of Mizuma. He has these things called Ntofos, which he's gained from uh, defeating other beasts and whatnot. And uh, through the years, he's taught his village how to defend themselves and was named the Pride of Mizuma. So really cool character, actually. Really interesting character in terms of a design, design standpoint. Th doing all the research actually kind of made me want to play this character a little bit more because he looked... I mean, he looks fun, but you'd have to play him a lot to really understand how he, he goes. So going through his passive is Dauntless Instincts, which basically he just marks enemies and deals more damage when he strikes them. No, Natofo strikes, there's like scaling, but basically he slams his big weapons down. And if he stacks up enough, he knocks people up in the air. Pat... This Pathmaker, he creates a big shield with his Ntofos and becomes immune to CC. His footwork is just a dash and gives him a shield, but he gets increased uh, range to dash with his E. And then All Out is what really makes this character interesting. It's basically like a set ult, which isolates them over terrain. And he changes his kit to deal damage and his scaling goes from like hp and tank stats and converts that into damage somehow i don't know so definitely make this uh big range mid-range big boy combat on the board beat him up does a lot of damage uh whenever you get the attack token uh Sante creates two zero cost and tofo strikes in hand so they get uh zero cost spells that uh the first one gives someone vulnerable and if you use your second one on the same card, Cassante creates a, or starts a free attack challenging an enemy. I guess maybe the two zero cost ones would be a little broken, but maybe both of them cost like four, like two mana. So you spend four mana to challenge an enemy or that would be interesting. That, that way it kind of plays into his Q in League of Legends where uh, he starts slams one of his things on someone and then if he hits a second one uh he starts combat with someone and it kind of gives renekton some synergy uh level up Cassante is used if tofo strikes four times kind of like draven and then when he's leveled up he goes all out gaining overwhelm when Cassante starts a free attack using his tofo strikes he the overwhelm damage is doubled so really doubling down on that all in um he wants to get it done you know that turn he wants to close out the game on that turn and the overwhelm kind of gives that renekton synergy as well so yeah pretty interesting card all right a good old demaglio demaglio demacia uh my cho my choice is sona uh, Zin Zhao would have been a really fun one too, but I feel like Sona has a little bit more of an ability to tell a story and and uh, go have more interesting background to tell a story around uh, Demacia. So her lore, she was born in Ionia and is a mute artist. Noxus invaded Ionia when she was growing up and they were forced to go to Demacia. When she got to Demacia, she turned to music and played on this magical harp, 
which uh, got attention from a noble family. The noble family adopted her and uh, eventually got her to be like helped her be better at music and uses her music to help heal allies and fight evil in league she's a very simple character and her q deals damage to a bolt uh like sends out a bolt it's it's basically like a point and click deals damage to enemies in the range her if enemies are in her w she heals them and then gives them a shield and the e gives them movement speed and then crescendo uh, it's just forward stun, but she's a very effective character, a very good character. I'd like to see her as a mid-range support champion, so someone who's very flexible in different places, but uh, is able to be, you know, she put her on the board and she immediately has an impact. It's kind of like what a lot of Demacia archetypes do, like with Garen, everyone gets plus one, plus one. With Jarvan, they just come out of your hand and challenge an enemy. The Sona, I'd like them, when you play them, they have an immediate effect, which she immediately heals your board. And then she levels up when you've healed four allies. But her level up ability, you give your allies regeneration. And then when you get the attack token, she creates a fleeting crescendo in your hand. And then you use that to stun an enemy. So very similar to uh, the whole idea of Demacia building a really strong front line and making sure that they never falter and um giving yourself a step up by giving a spell a, a, a stun in demacia where you just want to attack people have big stats cool so noxus i think from your intro you probably know exactly who i'm gonna choose because it's cled baby it's cled baby this Yordle, I think you guys are starting to see a little bit of a theme. A lot of the characters that I've chosen are Yordles, but I think Yordles are just fun-ass characters. And Benno City has a lot of lore that hasn't really been explored that much. Kled, so he's known in Noxus as a folk hero. Uh, he was involved in a great war who uh, Noxus wasn't really winning, and Kled was able to inspire troops to fight take one last stand he even got scarl to come back when he inspired them to fight through and uh, eventually allowed them to come out on top and now since he is won that important battle for noxus he walks around the plunders of war and and claims some of the spoils of war for himself so really fun character. I think he's a really fun, funny guy, and his voice lines in League are really good, and all just all around lots of potential in terms of a storytelling standpoint. And I feel like from a card building standpoint too, he also has a lot of fun potential. So essentially, Kled is his whole idea is just going in. Like his whole character is based on never faltering and always attacking and always taking an advantage so he has a little lizard named scarl who <laughs> he rides around on in game and while you're on scarl you are able to uh throw a bear trap at someone and it's basically a little cc slow it's also your shotgun. Uh, your W is just four empowered auto attacks with your last one dealing a lot of damage. And then your E is a dash where if you dash through someone, you get to dash through them one more time. And then your R, your ultimate ability, is your charge. You just <laughs> roll up Scarl and you go into battle, baby. You get after it. So that's basically cled in a nutshell he likes to go in he likes to attack so how would we translate that into a card game well first off i would say that this would be in had to be included in the rootin tootin shotgun shooting expansion with graves he and graves coming out in the same expansion both of them just shooting shotguns and then them making memes about rootin tootin shotgun shooting it's great cled would have to be an aggro card so early aggro like you drop him down on one and he's 2-1, uh, same with Le like same uh, stat line as Legion Saboteur. But the idea is that you want him to go in and die. You want him to like get blocked by your enemies. Because when he dies, 
that's when he gets unmounted and his stat line reverses. So, at you know, hopefully he dies and then he turns into a 1-3 or a 1-4. Where he can still attack. He has one attack. He can live through combat, but he's still weak because he doesn't have Scarl. But you still want him to attack. And then, once unmounted, Kled attacks twice. He levels up after he, you get out of battle. So, kind of leading into his lore of he inspired his troops and they came back so you get through battle the troops come back and then he levels up and when he levels up he starts a free attack giving all the allies quick attack and overwhelm for that round so kind of leading into charge so all of his uh all the board goes in and charges and he attacks once and then everyone comes back down so I think that would be really funny. And then kind of cycling around like Nidalee with uh, mounting and unmounting and remounting. You know, kind of playing around that mechanic too. Freljord. I think Freljord only has Nunu and Gragas. And I love Nunu, don't get me wrong. I really love Nunu. But I feel like Gragas would be so great. He uh, comes into the Freljord of Ash and... Uh, the rest of the Freljord getting into a big confrontation. He starts a brawl by headbutting someone. And then they uh, a big brawl starts to fight. And then Ash kind of yells at everyone and brings them together through Gragas proposing a drink with all of them. And after he unites the Freljord, after Gragas unites the Freljord with beer, he searches off into the frail yard looking for the best ingredients for the perfect beer <laughs> it's just like this this man's character is just so goofy and i love it you know he headbutts someone he starts a big old fight and then unites everyone with a drink and now he's just wandering he's just a bro he's just a bro he's just wandering the countryside but I love his character. He's so goofy and he's so fun. His his ability, whenever he, his passive, whenever he uses his ability over a certain amount of time, he just heals, <laughs> which is super nice in mid lane. Um, your Q, you basically roll out a barrel of beer and it explodes and deals damage. W, you get empowered next auto attack and um, deal extra damage to AOE. His E is a dash, which dashes into people and stuns people briefly and knocks them back. And his R, you throw an explosive cask and it, you know, makes a move. So you can set up some really, really hype plays by hitting your R and then your E into them. Like you Q, you like use your explosive barrel right here and then you ult them that way. And then you E into them while your Q is going off and you explode and do massive damage. It's really fun. Super high skill cap character, but also very simple to play. So, so I would see him be like a mid range support character where he uses alcoholic drinks to empower his attacks when he goes in. So, think of it like giving him a plus one, plus one. You take a drink and you go into battle. You get like a zero mana or a one mana fleeting spell when you get the attack token to give to an enemy or an ally where they drink a beer and get strong and then they go into battle. And then when Gragas is attacked with empowered stats three times, he levels up. And then after that, you get an attack token. Whenever you get the attack token, you create an explosive cask in hand, which is another fleeting like three cost spell. And you throw this spell at uh three adjacent enemies so you don't get to choose two it's just wh however they have the three enemies set up on their side of the board uh is who you get to stun like uh, if they have like five people on board and you send it over to this third guy it, it attacks like these three guys or something you know uh and that way you can set up stuns instead of like frostbites or anything i don't feel like frostbite really fi fits into his character but I feel like stuns definitely do fit into his character and he can be paired up to uh, be very flexible, you know, give enemy, give your ally stats, give himself stats, and then set up stuns for uh, the GG, which is kind of like what he does in League too, right? Like he throws his ult 
and then stuns people and then you know brings them back to the team and then whatever so really fun character all right and then last but not least the last region and i know you might be th saying oh but where's targon oh we'll get to that in a sec the last region is Runeterra, and I would really like them to bring Shaco into Legends of Runeterra. He'd be a really interesting character to build lore on from a standpoint, because literally he has no lore, so, you know. The ceiling is the ceiling is up. The, the, the sky is the limit with, with Shaco. Uh, basically, his lore, he has one paragraph of lore online. And all it is is no one knows where he comes from. He's just a jester that plays pranks on people and haunts people in Runeterra across the land. So he's just, Hey, I'm a jester. Okay. That's him. So it'd be really fun to see them expand on that. Um, let's go to all, uh, Shaco. His abilities are pretty cool. It's all about deceiving people. So just playing a lot of mind tricks. He gets extra damage if he stabs people in the back. His Q just makes him disappear and he dashes uh, for a certain amount of time. His W is jack in the box, so if enemies run over it, uh, they scare people and deals damage. And then he has a point and click E, which just throws uh, daggers at people. And then his ult, he does a little dash and then creates a clone, and that way you can't tell which one is the real one. It's weird. So I think I don't really know how you would create that, but it would likely be around a lot of the uh, jack in the boxes and uh, deceiving and <coughs> kind of basically make it around uh, Shaco. Like when you try to ping him similar to Fizz, you can't really deal damage to him. He just deceives you, creates a jack in the box that he takes the damage for him and once you've used Jack in the Box a certain amount of times, he create like he fills the boards with copies of Shaco. You don't know which one is which, and if you kill the real one, all of them disappear. But uh, if you just kill like the wrong one, then you know you never know. And uh, I don't know. Maybe the, he like plays a little trick in his level up animation, or I don't know. Who knows? Um, basically, just play mind tricks in the game and, and be kind of like a control mind trick game. So, all right, honorable mentions. As I said earlier, Targon, all Targon champions have already been added to Legends of Runeterra. Uh, Reach would be like Morgana, where Morgana was born in Targon, but she looks over Demacia and protects Demacia, so she's basically a Demacian champ. Um, but her package would be pretty cool if it was centered around like using her Black Shield. So giving people spell shield and buffing them. And then when she levels up, she stuns a certain amount of people and just kind of be about spell shields and CC kind of being in the same vein as she is in League of Legends. Cause I feel like that's a pretty easy concept. One that's easy to design and Morgana is very popular. So I feel like she'd be a pretty easy transfer over to Legends of Runeterra. I think they've, teased at her coming soon and it would play into her versus kale her and kale are sisters and blah 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 so uh Ixtal is not a region in legends of runeterra they've specifically stated that they're not adding more than 10 regions for balance reasons which i get but it it just seems odd to me that league of legends and the lore universe as a whole is really building this region up as elemental vestian people and kind of looking back i think vestian is maybe from ionia i don't know but um yeah excel is really cool and i i don't know why zion or Khan are not in the game and i if once again and they might be from ionia but i think they are from ixtal um i feel like a lot of ixtalians are vestian as well but anyway, so, um, yeah, I think Kiana would be really cool. They just added an elemental skills and spells to the game. So I feel like Kiana would definitely fit into some support those archetypes. Um, Zion or Rakan would be a really cool expansion just by themselves and creating like a, uh, pre-made deck. And then there's also, there's already ambush and stuff. 
where Rengar and Kha'Zix could give more support to that ar archetype in the future. So Ixtal has a lot of opportunity. The Void also would get lumped into Shirima. And I think Cho'Gath would be so freaking cool in the game. I think it'd be really funny to just have Cho'Gath, like, eat your own el enemies to create one massive Cho'Gath. And then when he got big enough, he just eats other people. <laughs> like, he eats your enemies once he gets big enough on his side. Like, you eat an ally and you gain its stats and stuff like that. And, um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like the Void would be a really cool region uh, to add in. And uh, I feel like there's definitely enough characters to support them doing that. Belveth is cool. Uh, Velkaz is definitely an honorable mention too, but I feel like I feel like Cho'Gath would be the coolest, definitely the coolest champion in the void to add to uh, LOL or LOR. And I think that's it. Yeah. So that is my thoughts on what champions we should add to Legends of Runeterra and what we could make their abilities be and uh, based on, you know, based on the lore and, and the card, I think it would be really cool to, you know, have these cool characters. So if you want to. Okay, Farfetch'd. All right, yeah. Let's see here. Paint. Old painter room. You know the drill. I haven't done this in a while. Uh, all right. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Far fetched. Fucking. I mean, he's a goofy ass looking motherfucker. Uh, let's go. Start with the head. Go with the body. I like where this is going. Like where this is going. This is looking pretty good start. All right. That's a head. I know that he has a fucking Beakarooski. So we're gonna hook a Beakarooski down here. But I'm pretty sure that's how. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Um. I feel like he has a little tail. And then we're just gonna like draw the body around. The body's probably a lot more, a lot more round. And I think he has like a little neck looking ass. Amazing, yeah. I feel like I feel like it's off to a good start, right? All right, he has some orange ass feet, right? Maybe he has like a little neck, like a little, like little these guys, you know, like a little. Like, that's where their fucking goddamn legs come from. Boom. Big to be bone. We're just gonna go. Does he have... What are the odds he has webbed feet? Aw, oh, damn it. That was a long stroke. Yeah, it was. I'm so funny. Boom. Yeah. Man, beautiful. I'm gonna make this one like this. That looks so bad. Okay. Yep. 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 Boom. All right. Fantastical start. Um, what color eyes does he have? I feel like his. Oops. I feel like his eyes are like this. <laughs> no way they are. <laughs> All right. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Not quite. A little more around. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh. Let's like get rid of this. Get rid of this. Uh, you think he has ears? Fantastic duck. He has, he has ears, maybe. But I think what we're really missing out on 
Now hear me out. We're, what we're really missing out on is his. Oh, that's. I do not want that kind of brush. Is it this? It's better. Yeah. All right. So he has like fucking karate chop wings. No, that looks terrible. It already does look terrible. He already he has karate chop wings. You know? That's supposed to be his other wing back there. His <laughs> other fucking wing. It's supposed to be like this. You know, like you know? I don't know. Component of far fetched. This is motherfucking stick, baby. And I'm pretty sure it it's like it looks like that. It has like a little knob looking ass. And it's green on the end. It's like his motherfucking defining feature as a duck. Uh, he's definitely brown. Orange. Oops. Didn't close up that side. Orange. Boom. And then, like, I want to say he has, like, blue eyes. And, like, he... I mean, I want to say he has ears, but... I think that's what you're going to get, my dude. Truly modern one. <laughs> How you doing, Mike? Nice to see you, dude. Thank you for uh, thank you for stopping by, my dude. This is a great duck, I think. Let's see. How we did. See? Not too far off. I want to say... I'm I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. All right, let's 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 check the two. Check the record. Nice, nice. Made me happy. Made me smile. Nice. Thank you, dog. Appreciate that. And the bidding starts at two hundred bits. Thank you. Honestly, it's not so bad. I mean, I got the leak correct. Oops. I got the leak correct. I got the I got the mouth correct. I forgot his little like you know, adding it after the fact is probably, you know, like I'm cheating a little bit. Oops. Cheating a little bit. Cheating a little bit. Cheating a little bit. That's another one of his defining features. Boom. I mean, not that bad. I got the webbed feet right. Uh, I didn't get the hand ass wings. What's up with Pokemon doing these hand wings? Why, like, why do Pokemon have to have wings as hands? It's like this guy, Lugia, just give them fucking hands or have them hold shit in their talons. So they, <laughs> I mean, it's like. So, Mike, you're telling me that you want people to just have hands, no arms, just hands? Is that your idea, Mike? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like this guy. Um... But yeah, there you go, Brock. Good old fashioned far fetched. Appreciate you, my dude. Uh, you know, thank you for, <laughs> thank you for the fucking twenty nine ones. It's crazy. All right. Uh, sure, I'll save him. Um, don't I DM these to you in Discord too? I don't know. It's been a while since I've done this shit. Um, but it is all you now, dude. Boom. There you go, my guy. 
Thank you for everything. Please do. <laughs> okay, I got you, dude. <laughs> Fucking, hey, those are gonna be worth something someday, you know. When I become rich and famous, nah, that's not gonna happen, right? I'm just gonna bake bread for the rest of my life, right? I don't know. Um. All right. So what were we doing? What were we doing? We talking about lore, talking about some other stuff. 